This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio. To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time space continuum to this place that I call the X Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to us and you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network and the Star Starcom Radio Network. Worldwide toll-free 800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the X Zone live as well as our refeeds at www.exoneradiotv.com 24 7, 365. Uh, just, uh, just a quick reminder this is the last day of August. It is August the 31st. Uh, tomorrow we start September, which means we have a countdown until September 30th when we're having the debate of all ufology debates right here on the X-Zone Radio Show. Stanton T. Friedman will be debating Michael Horn, the topic of the debate, the Billy Meyer case. That is Wednesday, September 30th, from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. Eastern. And then from 10 p.m. until midnight, we are going to have a, a, a round table with various guests discussing the results of the, of the uh, debate. So once again, mark it on your calendar. Wednesday, September 30th, from 8 p.m. until midnight, the Billy Meyer debate with Stanton T. Friedman and Michael Horn. Exonation, my guest to this hour is a young lady we've had the pleasure of having on the show before. Her name is Helen Reese. She, um, she is a medium of over 20 years. Her focus is on spiritual healing for mind, body, and soul. With a working background in finance and accounting, she has come to appreciate the importance of bridging the gap between the material and spiritual worlds. Now, Betty, uh, mind energy healer, once wrote, it's up to every one of us to seek knowledge, improve the power of our mind, and discover what we really are capable of with the expansion of our mind, health, excitement, and positively, and very important, independence and self-reliance. Armed with a lighthearted attitude, my guest this hour, Helen Reese, resonates strongly with this view and teaches others not to give in and move forward regardless of life's obstacles. Joining me now from Australia, where it's tomorrow. I always find that strange. I'm talking to tomorrow from yesterday. <laughs> Here's Helen Reese. And Helen, welcome back to the x and Always great talking to you tomorrow. Good morning, Rob. It's a <laughs> fabulous day here in Brisbane, Queensland. <laughs> Um, and thank you for having me. It's always a great pleasure talking to you. I love your 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 energy and the way that you look at life. And we need more positive influence in our lives these days. And that's what you bring to the show. Oh, well, thank you. Hope so. Don't like to live live negatively. <laughs> no, no. But it's kind of hard in today's world not to, you know, with all the uncertainty, all the unrest, all the, all the the negativity that people of all ages are faced with. And then we're inundated with data from the different uh, uh, handheld devices that we all carry and the amount of data that we're, that we're challenged to assimilate and make some sense with. So how do, how do we take the material 
over data flow that we have and and work it in such a manner that we can actually, you know, um, bridge the gap with spirituality. Well, to be spiritual really is a matter of meditation. Mm-hmm. And but to bring that together with our everyday life, which is the most really we have to bridge the gap in order to move forward um, properly. And and that gap, that gap that we that I'm talking about is is the simple things, is not to take yourself too seriously, to look at everything you do and see if if it's if it's practical to be able to do that. Is if is it is it the way to go forward mm-hmm. or do we live in the ethos, you know? So um the reality is we live in this material world and we have to uh, walk the path of that. But bringing it together is sometimes a little difficult. However, I don't believe it is difficult. It is only the obstacles of our mind that, that, we, that, that, that brings the difficulties into to play. So what should we do? Should we reevaluate ourselves and, if necessary, Start all over again, take a good look at ourselves, find our weak points, find our strong points, and incorporate them into better understanding and living with spirit? Oh, it, it, every day, every day we wake up, every time we wake up, mm-hmm. we should have a plan of what we're about to do in during the day. Because if we don't, sometimes, and it doesn't have to be, over, I'm not talking about complicated plans here. It's just the purpose that which, with which you're going to move forward during the day. And that could be a simple thing like just going for a walk or, or just um, knowing that whatever you're going to do is going to help yourself and some, or somebody else and being kind. It's so simple. It doesn't have to be difficult. So how do we how do we get a better connection with spirit, Helen? You know, because I, I believe in my heart of hearts that today so many people have lost that connection, which is very valuable and a necessity. Ah, oh, certainly is. And I, I would personally miss it greatly if I wasn't able to have that connection to the divine and whoever the divine is for people. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do they do it? I'll come back. Prayer, prayer helps. But also it is just sitting quietly by yourself and just taking a few minutes each day just to reflect on where you're at mm-hmm. and and to be able to to look at yourself in a way that is respectful and and not to... Put a downer on yourself, no matter what happens. What I do, maybe uh, maybe this might help some listeners, what I do when I get home at night after doing the show, it's very early in the morning, it's about three or four in the morning when I get home. I walk around the house, go into the bedroom, give my wife a kiss, tell her I'm home, tell her I love her, then I make sure our three little doggies are okay and they always come to meet me at the front door. And I, I just appreciate what I have. And then I, I make myself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And I go to the living room and I sit in my favorite chair with the lights off. And I reflect on the day I've had. And I ask myself, what did I do for someone today that was good? How did I make a positive change in a person's life? And that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's 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 you do you do need to help yourself, but you also need to be able to express yourself to other people yeah. in a very kind way, being kind, just smiling at people, because a smile can bring joy to someone who hasn't got that, hasn't got anybody around them yeah. that will actually say, I. I see you. 
I know you're there. You mean something to me. You're another person. You're another being. You're part of my existence. So why shouldn't people be kind to people? And like you said, a simple smile, opening up a door for somebody. Or Oops. carrying... Gro- I, I've, I've done this many times. Carried groceries to the car for for people that I think are having problems. You know, like, what's wrong with that? Nothing. And... and th- I guess sometimes with what's going on in the world because mm-hmm. people are all at different levels and sometimes the difficulties that they face in their in their own lives make them do things that are that aren't the best thing for themselves or other people. So so there's all sometimes there's that suspicion if I smile at them what's mm-hmm. going to happen? And so I, the, it's the fear that takes over. But if we all just started to do that, then the fear would go away. And, and the actions of people might be toned down somewhat instead of doing things that aren't, aren't what, what we would like on an individual level. We're, we're coming to my most favorite time of year, and that is the Christmas Time. And you know, it's it's not even September 1st here in North America. Yesterday, my wife and I went to Costco. It's a big wholesale store. You buy a membership and you, you know, it's just a massive store. You go in and you get good deals. Guess what they had displayed in the middle of their store yesterday? Christmas, what was that? Oh. Christmas trees. Christmas trees. Yeah, well. Christmas trees. That, <laughs> it doesn't take long, does it? I, I'm sa- I'm saying, my gosh, we haven't even usually Halloween was the kickoff for Christmas, yeah. but now, not even September the first, and they had the Christmas decorations, Christmas wrapping paper, Christmas trees, and it's like, holy cow, slow down! Yeah. Like even the retailers are pushing us now. Yeah. Commerce um, does tend to take over, doesn't it? But perhaps it's because um, it's there's not a, a lot of money for the average person sometimes, mm-hmm. and maybe it's that time factor that they're giving people to put things together for Christmas, perhaps. Yeah, that, that's that's a good way of looking at it. But <laughs> as we get closer to Christmas, you know, you have the you have there, there's something in the air. I, I I I just call it the the Christmas kiss, the kiss of Christmas, where there's there's love in the air. People have a little sprint in their steps. They dig deeper in their pockets to help organizations like the Salvation Army, the Red Feather, the United Way, the different food banks, the homeless shelters. And and I I often wonder why can't we do this all year long? Why is it just at Christmas time we find the compassion to help others? You know, people are in need all year long. Yes. It's very sad, actually. Um, but at the same time, some of it we've brought, we've brought upon ourselves. And it mightn't be just our actions. It might have been somebody else's actions that's caused to be where you are. But at the same time, you, you have to take responsibility for yourself. And, to, and it's like you said, reflecting on what's happened and what can I do better to make it make it better? What can I do to make it better? You know, there, uh, when I was in Scouts, there was a song, uh, that, and one of the verses was, Help me, Father, this I pray, to make me a better person each day. Mm. And once again, we seem to have lost the connection, that spiritual connection. Whether, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Yahweh, whether you believe in Jehovah, whether you believe in whoever you're, the, the deity is that, that you credit with being at the top of the totem pole, there seems to be a struggle going on between yes. the different philosophies on who is right, who is wrong, and who should take over, who should lead, who should follow. Yeah. And it doesn't matter in the end, for there is only one universal power, and it doesn't matter what mm-hmm. we call that power. 
you know. So it's understanding the law, the natural laws that are around us and the cause and effect of everything that we do. Yeah. Is it possible, like you said, whatever we call it, is it possible that by putting singular names and splintering up the the religious philosophies that we are doing more harm than good is it is, do you, is it possible that the time has come in in our sociological evolve, uh, evolution that we look and say hey listen it's time that we took responsibility for ourselves and Religion, as we know it, needs to be revamped because it hasn't been changed in thousands of years. The human race has evolved, but religion hasn't. And religion, in I would say 80% of the case, is the connection to spirit. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, more and more, well, what I see here, mm -hmm. here in Australia is that people are more, they're not very religious here, not really. Uh, in fact, religion tends to take a back seat a little bit, um, but the, but people are more of a spiritual nature now. Whether it's because uh, Australia is sort of country that's quite isolated, um, you know, we're, we're surrounded by oceans, mm -hmm. and maybe it's that, and because of the it's old. The continent itself is extremely old. And so I, I don't know whether that's got anything to do with it or whether we, the fact that we come from um, the, the convict uh, colonies and, and all of that and, and the, the freedom that people seek. Mm. And I guess if we bring it back to a worldly thing, we have to find our own freedom and personality, the ego tends to sometimes override our spiritual self. Here, Long, here, yes. here, here in North America and in Europe, there is, there is growing unrest between the, uh, the nation of Islam and the rest of the world. We're seeing that people are fleeing Syria, people are fleeing Afghanistan, making their way to Greece in order to get into Central Europe. Central mm, Europe is... Very, very sad. It, it is. It is. And, people, and what are they going to find there? Because if you look at Greece, yeah. Greece is a poor country. It is. And, and when you see the thousands of people who have been promised the world yeah. by smugglers and the like, it's... It's, it's that persecution. I cannot understand the persecution that has been like a tightrope. It's like a tightrope around people's necks, if you want, wish to say it like that, and they can't breathe. So the only way they can do it is to escape. In the end, they have to be responsible for, their, for themselves in their own country. That's right, it's and I think this difficult. is what the big problem is, is that certain countries have not, as I gave the example with religion, evolved. No. They, they, they stand back and they want to keep with their old ways. And when people from those countries leave and, and seek and go into the what they believe to be the land of plenty, the lands of milk and honey, where they go to try and get a better life for themselves and their family, and God bless them, you can't, you can't, you can't fault them for that. No. It's, it's like the countries like Syria, Afghanistan, they have to take responsibility. They have to make the changes. Yes. You know, it's, it, I don't think it's fair putting the burden of change, the financial burden, the, the, uh, the logistic burden on countries that are already facing disastrous times and, you know, putting all these immigrants into Greece that's just yeah. making a bad situation worse, in my opinion. Well, it's not just Greece. It's Italy. I, th yeah. I believe it's even Spain. And it's all around that Mediterranean yeah. area where they're just flooding into into these countries thinking 
that life's going to be better. And unfortunately, unless they change within themselves, that's right. Nothing, nothing will be different. And in fact, it just causes more anger, more Hate. angst about everything they do. Yeah. Because they don't want to change their beliefs. I was a bit devastated the other day when I heard um, the news of these two young girls in a Muslim country mm-hmm. who were going to be raped publicly because their mother left their father. I just, I was just devastated by hearing that. Why, why is it like that? <laughs> it, it's wrong. In my opinion, it's wrong. Now, here in Canada, we used to have, uh, you know, we used to say, Merry Christmas. You're not supposed to say Merry Christmas anymore because it's not politically correct. It's season's yeah. greetings. I say yeah. to that I say to that bullshit. It's <laughs> Merry Christmas. And I don't know how many times I've said this on air. If you come to a country that you want to live in, and if you cannot conform yourself to the way of the country where the majority of the population the founding fathers of the country and what the country has been founded upon. If you don't like it, where that plane landed, it leaves from. Absolutely. (laughs) See, I don't understand why they come to a country for a better life Mm -hmm. and then want to proceed to change it. Change the way people look at things because all all it does is it causes anger. It's a bit sad, I'm afraid. It is sad, and like I said, I can understand people wanting to have a better life. I think everyone is entitled to that. However, there is a right way and a wrong way of doing it. I don't think that uh, that that I should have to be told that I should say season's greetings instead of Merry Christmas. I don't think that I should be told I shouldn't say Happy Easter because of its religious connotations that other religious religions don't believe in it. So I have to change my way. I don't see why other religions can tell me and the government that the Bible should not be in schools and that religious or scripture should not be taught in the schools. Yes. It, it, uh, uh, if it's freedom of religion, then all religions should be taught in schools. Exactly. If, if that's what it is. Uh, but it's a bit like going to a, another country. And, look, I, I believe the majority of Muslims are peaceful people. Yep. It is, it's only, you know, that minority that's causing the issues. But, you know, the, everyone's got to be responsible for that. And and it's up to the, the peaceful ones to make the changes, to make it happen. But, you know, like if we go to a country like that, not, I'm not in, I don't even want to do that personally. Right. But, but we are expected to live as they do. That's right. So that's what they should, that's what they should expect when they come to, to another country that that's foreign to them. But you see, as I, as I see it, is their country is not politically correct. They, their country does not bow to the visitors or the new members of their society as we do here in Canada, the United States, and other countries around the world. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you don't want us to have the Bible in our schools. Okay, well, we won't because we don't want to upset you. You know, too bad. Buzz off. If you don't like it, go back home. Go live in the desert. Go live in a grass hut. Do whatever you want to do. I don't think that that we should have to change our ways. What does it mean that the, that the governments of these countries, including Canada, have an open door immigration policy because they want more people to come in under their tenure uh, in leading the government, the House of, of Government, so that their party will maintain power because of new votes? Is this what it's coming down to? Yeah. The politics takes over everything. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I just. I just find it really bad. I've. I've. It. It disturbs me. It disturbs me to see people who don't deserve the white glove treatment getting it, and the people who who deserve it 
are told that, no, 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 you can't do that anymore because you're not being politically correct. I think Nobody it's has- about equality, equality of employment within a government. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, you're getting all sorts of people in there with different views. And this is where that political correctness comes from and um, so-called political correctness. And uh, I guess they're trying to show people what their beliefs are but forgetting that other people are entitled to their own beliefs. Yeah. And I guess that's what it comes to. And they're not connecting spiritually because if they were connecting spiritually and forgetting about the religious side of things, Mm -hmm. then they wouldn't even be going, they wouldn't even be talking like they do. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Everyone. And that brings me right back to the point. Is it time where we disband religions as they are today and reevaluate and get back to the the core value of religions, which is spirit. Absolutely. Um, how do we do that? I I believe if we if we as individuals mm-hmm. start looking spiritually at ourselves, then then that quiet revolution will occur over many years. It will never occur in our time, but over over hundreds of years, if we get back to that individual spiritual connection. But you see, a lot of people don't believe in the afterlife. Mm-hmm. And, and that's their difficulty, but they believe in God. So who do they think God is? He's, he's not a personality or she's not a personality. Well, who is God? She, that's a that's good, right. that's a who good is question. God? Who is God? Is he or she the creator of all? Is he or she the knowing force of all? Or is he or she the combined essence of all those who were, all those who are, and all those who will be. Yes. When you, spirit, mm-hmm. when when the spirit enters you, when you feel the spirit come into you, you get light bulb moments. You know, right? And that's when you become inspired. And when you, when, you, when you become inspired, amazing things happen. And that's where bridging that gap comes into being because it's that inspiration of life that you take forward that will make things, different things happen, amazing things happen. Oh, I believe in all possibilities, actually. <laughs> As do I, my dear friend, as do I. Helen, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Always great having you here with us in the Exxon. Exxon Nation, Helen Rees is our special guest, www.eventshelenrees.com. That's eventshelenrees.com. And Helen and I will be back on the other side of this short break. As we do some business here in the Exxon, some of you will be listening to your local news, international news, and others... You're going to be right with us here in the X-Zone as we broadcast live and around the world from our center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. I'm with you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight on the X-Zone Broadcast Network and Starcom Radio Network. Don't go away. Ever wondered if your advertising dollar is really working for you? If your ad would have been here, you and more than 4 million people would be listening to it right now. Contact ads at exxoneradiotv.com. Jeff Gilson didn't go out looking for adventure, danger, or the answers to most of the controversial political intrigues of the past 30 years. But he found all three when he began investigating the mysterious death of his close friend, Margaret Thatcher's favorite speechwriter. 
Just an ordinary guy living in a small, sleepy suburb 20 miles outside of London, Jeff's questions provoked a powerful response on both sides of the Atlantic. He was shot at, warned off by the CIA, and formed a close bond with one of Israel's most notorious intelligence officers. Relive Jeff's gripping adventure in his fast-paced book, Maggie's Hammer. Peel away the layers of establishment deception and discover, as Jeff did, that his friend was an assassin with British intelligence, that Great Britain has been America's secret hitman for the past 30 years, and that Princess Diana was not the target in that Parisian tunnel. All of this and more when you visit www.maggieshammer.com and find the link to buying this explosive book online. More and more ordinary people feel they no longer have control of their lives. Jeff fought back. He asked the difficult questions. He set out to redesign his own destiny. And you can do the same using Maggie's Hammer as your guide. Don't waste a moment. Buy it today. Visit www.maggieshammer.com. Good real estate websites are not just about showing listings, but offering visitors valuable information about neighborhoods, market statistics, tips, and personal insights. Luckily, you will find that on Roost, but you won't on many other real estate websites in Budapest. That's why we created Roost. Roost is a website with tailored results for the foreign investor, curated by Hungarian-loving expats who found their home abroad and decided to roost in Budapest. Let Roost help you get started on the right foot. Whether you intend to live, work, play, retire, or simply invest abroad, Roost offers all types of properties in Budapest, from affordable studios to luxury homes. From neighborhood insights like where to grab a great coffee or how to buy property, our team of local experts can answer your questions and speak to the direct concerns of a foreign investor. Buying foreign property is an exciting and complex adventure. It can also be very time-consuming and costly if you don't have the best information and resources at hand. Roost provides professional real estate services and assistance to an international clientele of foreign property investors and rental apartment owners in Budapest. For more information on Roost, visit their website at www.roost.co. That's www.roost.co. Manifestation is driven by imagination, intent, and passion. In our culture, all three have been distorted and disabled by modern media and exploitation. Re-engage your imagination and your passion by entering into the world of paranormal romance. Kahir O'Donnell takes her readers on an exciting journey into the endless possibilities of loving, passionate, and mutually respectful male-female relationship. Her latest book, The Long Dark Night, features special ops adventure, a daring rescue, a psychic woman from the stars, and a special agent that will die to protect her. The Long Dark Night by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or amazon.com. Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. 
Dr. Kimberly brings real life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Welcome back, everyone. Helen Reese is my guest this hour. Her website is eventshelenreese.com. And Helen is in Brisbane, Australia, where today here in North America is tomorrow over there. And uh, listen, if there's a way that you can actually check the numbers for me, you know, uh, in in the newspaper in the next couple of days uh, and send me the lottery numbers, I'll split it with you 50-50. How's that? (laughs) <laughs> do you want me to tell you a story about that that happened to a lady just recently with Lotto? Oh, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> this lady had, and it was it's about inspiration, really. Mm-hmm. And this lady and her husband had lost everything, like their business, their home, you name it. They had they'd lost everything, and then she had four dollars left in in her pocket, and she thought that maybe the best thing that she could do was just go buy a lotto ticket. And do you know what? She won a million dollars. Isn't God, that inspiring? That is. <laughs> that is. That is. And, and when people... She, she, when people she's, sorry, she just used her... This is what I was talking about, inspiration yeah. and, and, and connecting to spirit. She was there at the right time and she was ready to receive. And that's what happened. She won the million dollars. Isn't that wonderful? It, it is. And, and people do not realize that w- they sabotage themselves most of the time by believing that they're not worthy. So she, it was quite a dramatic, you know, comeback for her, so her and yeah. her family. So. And that's so wonderful. <laughs> that is so wonderful. You and I talked the last time you were with us about meditation, and I think we ran out of time. And, and, and I promised my, my listeners that we would take a bit of time tonight to talk about meditation and why meditation is so important. So, it is a way to, to regain clarity in your life. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. is a time to sit quietly, let yourself just be still and not allow the thoughts of every day to come into being. Now, that's not always easy to do, but the easiest way is just to focus on your breath because when you do that, you can't think. But it gives you time to to reach that stillness. And if you do that every day, every day, for a few minutes every day, the clarity that can come into your life is amazing. Would that be equivalent to the old saying, take time to stop and smell the roses? Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like when you sit and reflect on what mm-hmm. you've done. Yeah. It, see, see, I think that's really important to sit down and reflect because we, and we shouldn't, if we've made a mistake, we shouldn't beat ourselves up for, up about it. We've made the mistake. We can't change that mistake if that's if it is a mistake. Right. We can't change it. But what we can do is say is say is give ourselves the time to. Or how can I do that better? And that's what meditation does for you. It allows you to to take stock of yourself. You know, a, a most a lot of times we have to learn to forgive ourselves, and and not and to and because we beat ourselves up all the time in different 
different things. Ah, oh, mm-hmm. what is what a silly person I am um, for for doing that. But you know, it's about forgiveness, and the best way to forgive is to allow yourself to go over the scene, but but and then just give yourself time to to reflect on it and then forgive yourself. You and, know, and not it, only do you beat yourself up, but in the course of a regular day, you might get beaten up verbally and psychologically by other people. Yeah. And then that's when you have to forgive them. So you don't carry mm-hmm. it. So you're not pushed down into that dark hole sometimes that, that can happen. If you suppress, if you suppress your feelings, your emotions, and I'm not talking about being explosive about the emotions, but but being able to express it in a way that's not negative, if I can say it that way. I understand. Yeah. So so it's if someone's going to is bullying you, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh if someone is bullying you, then the best way to answer them is thank you for your kind words and smile at them. Kill them with kindness. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. How can we set our intentions to ensure that the intentions that we are asking for become reality? Taking little steps, being sure that everything we do is practical and achievable. If we, we can have a big picture, right. there's no, no concerns about having a big picture, a big dream. But how do we get there? We don't get there in one big leap. No. We get there doing it one step at a time. So each day with your plan of what you're going to do, if you want to manifest something into your life, it's just looking at the little baby steps we have to take to ensure that we're going to achieve it. And then if we come to a point where we're not sure, we have to review what we're doing and whether this is going to be actually achievable and change our minds and do something different. Our son has a, has a favorite saying. He says, inch by inch, life is a cinch. Yard by yard, life is way too hard. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, people forget the practicalities of life and only see what they want mm-hmm. instead of looking at, okay, I might want, you know, they might be wanting a house or a home or some sort but see, what is a house? See, I don't want to have a house. I don't want a house. I want a home that's filled with love and happiness. Uh, that's what I want. Right. Because it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter. We can't take it with us when we pass over. True. But but what if if everything within where we live, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be just a tent. It doesn't matter. If in that place we have love and we're happy, that's all that counts. That's all that counts. I believe this sincerely. As do I. As do I. You know, um, one of the one of the simplest and yet most important, if not the most important aspect of life is love. People, and without love, we can't go forward. That's right. That's right. Because love's, love is the, is the beginning. With love, you have respect. With love, you have honor. With love, you are responsible. With love, you take a role in in what this wonderful existence that we are all part of is 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 about and being happy and laughing and yeah. bringing laughter into your life is so important and 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 it's so much more fun anyway so it is <laughs> why why does life have to be so serious it does you know 
I've had guests on in the past who believe that if they put pictures of these beautiful cars on their fridge or these been magnificent homes and or the you know big piles of money that they look at that that it'll happen and i keep saying to them and these are some of the so-called top experts in the world i say you're forgetting the main important thing to tell these people they have to work for it it's not going to manifest itself you have to take action exactly that you desire and then it might not be the right thing for you so that's the things that you have to learn yeah. to look at review every day you know it's just like people have have dreams they they want to accomplish things and and they start and they they hit a little bump in the road and they feel it's a failure that they can't do it, it they shouldn't be doing it and and i i keep saying failure is a lesson in your success you can um, yeah have you ever heard of james joyce no now james joyce was an irish writer i think he passed away in 1955, and he said the uh, mistakes are portals of discovery. I, 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 found, yeah. I found that's a really great, I, I think I've missed a few words there, but but errors are the portals of discovery for yeah. what can happen in the future. Sure. I, I don't know anyone who has been successful or is successful that hasn't had a failure on their Absolutely. way to success. <laughs> You know, it's it's not like some of these new age gurus talk about that. It's it's you know, you, you if you confess it, you will possess it. Yes, but you've got to work for it. The difference between a dream and your reality is working at it to make it happen. It's not going to fall off the back of a cabbage truck into the back of your car, gang. <laughs> no, you got to work for it. Yeah. Every little action makes it happen. You know, they, in the world, to be successful, it's not nine to five, five days a week. It's giving it your all, giving it everything you can, being tough enough that when you're knocked down by a little setback, you get off your butt, wipe yourself off and go again. That's what it's about. Yeah. Because it's- the reward is what you really want. And the reward is... You have succeeded. You have achieved your goal. And you know what? Once you achieve that one, there are many more goals. You've got the Absolutely. you've got the solution. You you've got the formula now. You've got the yeah. formula. <laughs> I, I have uh, there's something. Well, I, I I did a small workshop on the weekend, and we were talking about intent mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, inspiration versus intent, and what the difference was, but. Um, I've almost lost. Um, but where the thing that I we I gathered from everybody is that they they forget to review their lives, and it's in the reviewing of that that things happen. I, I, it was quite interesting mm-hmm. to see the re, the different people and where they all came from, and 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 what what they felt about everything. What was the general consensus? They all knew the, they all knew they had to do it, mm-hmm. but it's actually about how to go about it that was the issue. You know, they forgot that it's the simple things that make things happen. Yeah, and and you know, before you and I went on air, I, I said my favorite old past saying was, "Life is simple; we complicate it." Absolutely. Yeah. Are you, I, um, are you finding that more and more people are opening up? Is it, And if you find they're opening up, is it that they're being touched? They're being, they're seeing that, that something is missing and they're coming to the, the conclusion that, hey, there's spirit missing in my life. Yes. The younger one, the young, what I'm finding is that the younger people, mm-hmm. the younger generation are the ones that are opening up to being, to being spiritual. So a lot of them aren't that interested in religion as such. That's my experience here. But mm-hmm. what they're interested in 
is is being part of the whole universe, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and what I find is that the universe is is open to everyone. So out there, all the ideas are there. It is just if that if 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 you're ready to accept to do something mm-hmm. that that things can happen. It's a bit like um, perhaps oh, my daughter gave an example of when she was seven years old, and she dreamed at the time of you know the Walkman how, how that it was going to be invented. Really, now she was only really? seven years old, and it, I think it came about when she was twelve. Mm-hmm. And, and she said, well, obviously I wasn't ready to do anything with that opportunity because I right. wasn't ready. And so that's what I believe is, is that we have to be ready in ourselves to receive and make something happen. That's the key word. People have to be ready. They have to be able to understand a message that they're getting, a thought that they're getting. And, and they... Just open up your heart. I, I believe Absolutely. that's what it takes is opening up your heart. And being ready. And if you're ready and you take action straight away, mm-hmm. that's when, when when life gets exciting for you. I am anything but a new age guru. I'm not saying anything that I have not experienced myself. I know what it is to work hard. I know what it is to work on your dream and never let that dream go. I failed at many things, but I've looked at each failure as an opportunity to learn and to improve. And and th- and so have we. We've, yep. we, as a family, we failed in lots of things. But you know, it's about getting up and starting again and just going forward because you learn. If you yep. learn from your mistakes and you don't repeat the pattern, mm-hmm. then then the life becomes more of a breeze. It's a pursuit of happiness that's important. And when it comes to your family, never forget the love. Never. Absolutely. Never. I'm I'm very fortunate. I I feel I'm very fortunate because I have the love of my family around me. And it it's and because we all work at it, we all work at it together. It's not just me yep. showing the love. It's everybody in the family is showing the love. And that's what it's all about. Everybody is responsible to do that. It's not just one Mm -hmm. person. So many wise men have said, all you need is love. All the, all the, all the religious icons, prophets, all you need is love. The Ted commandments of Christianity. Love. Love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments, you know. Nope. that's That should be the basis of what um, people should look at, really, and just live by those Ten Commandments. That's right. You don't have to be religious and have a religion to do that. So. But basically the Ten Commandments are common sense. Yes. It's it's very common sense, you know, like honor thy mother and thy father, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. And, and, you know, it's common sense. They were the guidelines or the laws put down for society thousands of years ago when societies were new and there was no law and order, basically. So yes. the law and order was put down. And all that, all, the, all that does is basically tells you how to lead a good life, you know, and, and then do unto others. Well, you know, that, that's common sense too. But the simplistic common sense that we have all been taught seems to have been overshadowed by the wants, needs, and desires as, as embedded in us by society. So how do we how do we turn things around? We just have to spread the word that love is the pursuit of happiness. The happiness is the pursuit of love. I don't care which way you yeah. put it. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. That's why I love having you on the show because you get to the heart of the matter and 
you make a positive difference and you are one of my favorite people. Oh, thank you, Bob. I enjoy being on your show, so it's great. Thank you. Listen, uh, we're coming to the time when you and I have to say so long for now. Let our listeners know what you're going to be up to and how they can contact you for one-on-one consultations. Well, they can contact me by Skype. Um, I it's Helen R two eight if they want one if they if if they want a consultation, um, or if they can just contact me by phone. Um, my my phone my mobile phone number is six one four zero eight zero six one nine nine one, or they can email me at Helen at events dot com. And or there's a contact there if people want to contact me and I can answer them on the website. Super. Helen, take care of yourself. I look forward to the next time when you and I meet here in the X-Zone. Until then, my friend, take care of yourself and never stop passing the love around. Absolutely. God bless to everyone. Take care, Helen. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. X-Zone Nation, Helen Reese has been my guest this hour. Events. HelenRees.com. I'll be back on the other side of this news break at the top of the hour as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Visit us online at www.xzoneradiotv.com where you can listen to the X Zone 24 7, 365, as well as go through the archives and select what you'd like to hear on demand. I'm Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away.